Alrighty, morning everyone and welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel on another beautiful day. In today's video we are gonna talk about the Omega Moon Swatch or just Moon Swatch or Omega and Swatch collaboration, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter. It's still the same thing that we are talking about. And why are we talking about this watch? Well, because I just don't think it's a good buy. Now, hear me out before you write any hate comments. Um, there is a good reason for that. There is a good reason why I say that. I'm going to explain to you every single bit about that. And I'm also going to explain to you why it is a good watch, but not as it is right now. And we are going to get right into all of that in just a very moment. But first of all, I want to thank every single one of you that has um, watched my videos before this very point. Uh, because I, I am actually quite amazed how many how many views my, my short little videos got until this very point. So thank you very much for that. Now the Omega Moon Swatch. That thing comes in nine different colors. All of them being very different, obviously, because, well, it wouldn't really make a lot of sense to make them look the same. And each and every one of them has the theme, kind of, of one of the planets in our solar system, including the sun, which is not really a planet, but a sun, and um, also including the moon, which is not really a planet either. So, yeah, that's a thing, apparently. But... Anyways, they all look really cool. You can see them right here. Um, all really nice designs, really nice colors. I honestly like the mission to Pluto um, the best. I also like the mission to Uranus, which sounds wrong, and I hope that I don't get this video punished for that. But uh, you know what I mean. That's that one. That's also there. And um, honestly, I like these watches. They really look cool, they really add something new to the whole watch game. It's something that most people can get because the watch is 250 bucks if you buy it exactly from Swatch. You cannot buy it from Omega if I remember correctly. Uh, even though it is a collab of both brands, I think you can only buy it from Swatch. Or, and that's the problem, or you can buy it from eBay for like four times the price? Yeah, that, that, that's a, a thing. But let's not bash on the watch like too early. Uh, I first want to go over a little bit of um, the technical terms of this watch. So it is in fact not a limited run. Most people seem to think that because it fetches incredibly insane numbers on the secondary market. But it is not. It is definitely not limited in any way whatsoever. And you can indeed pick it up a few years from now, presumably. So... Why did it go up in value this much? Well, that's pretty much just hype. And the problem with having just hype is that it's a watch that is technically worth $250. So if you're paying in excess of a thousand for it, you still only get a $250 watch. And um, the issue with that is that a $250 watch also being interesting, being very pretty, looking like a Omega Speedmaster Moon Watch, which is obviously one of the greatest watches that has ever come out on this planet, um, and one of the most beautiful watches in my opinion, so getting that for 250 bucks, great stuff. However, it's still only a ceramic watch that is dyed with a natural pigment, which is a nice thing. However, there are also some difficulties with that, such as this, for example. If you're a very sweaty person, I have a very sweaty wrist, it could very well be that it gonna, it's going to stain. Which is alright for a $250 watch. I guess it's not great. But for a thousand bucks? No. I really don't think that anyone's going to be happy with a thousand dollar watch that's going to stain your wrist. That's not cool. Not all of them do that. The blue one does that though. If you have a sweaty wrist. So, yeah. Not great. Just to give you a little bit of a comparison, this actual Omega watch, a Omega Seamaster, with a blue rubber strap, is not gonna stain your wrist. What's the difference? Well, this one is five grand, instead of 250 bucks. So it is obvious that if you're getting a watch that is worth 250 bucks, that there are potentially some difficulties with it. Especially if the main concern of this watch is obviously the, the design, which they nailed. Of course they did. But 
it is just not a thousand dollar watch. Besides that, for the price point of 250 bucks, it obviously has to be a quartz watch for it to be any decent quality. I mean, if you've ever seen an automatic watch for 250 bucks, um, Seiko does some watches that are okay. They don't keep time very well though. So I think that the quartz movement actually is a decent move from Swatch slash Omega uh, for this watch because an automatic movement or even a, a manual winding um, movement would have not given them the accuracy that they achieved with this watch if it was implemented in a watch that's 250 bucks. It's just, it's not going to happen, okay? Um, like, for example, most Seikos that have, that are under the price point of like 250 bucks and have an automatic movement, for example, um, they tend to lose like up to five seconds a day in each direction, which is just not good at all. It's not terrible, you know, because most likely uh, it's not noticeable because you can just uh, turn the watch around if you're if you're putting it off uh, for the night and it's gonna um, it's gonna put the seconds back, so to say. Uh, but that's just not an accurate movement altogether. So I think that the quartz movement is actually a pretty good choice here, and um, I think that it's gonna last a decent amount of time. This watch is obviously not something for generations though. I mean, saying it again, $250 watch, it's hyped up, it's it's a beautiful watch. Um, as I said, I, I love most of them, besides the yellow one, because that looks absolutely hideous, but most of them I really, really like, and I think that it's a great watch to wear, I think that it's a great watch to buy, but not for a thousand bucks. Please just don't. Now, will this watch go down in price? Yes, of course it will, and it already already has, actually. Because, well, when it first came out, like the very first couple of days, you could actually only buy them for around 1,500 bucks. Now, here in Europe, they have come down from like around 800 bucks for the Mission to Moon, which is the most expensive one, uh, to like maybe about 650 for one of the less desirable models, including the hideous yellow one. So, yeah, it definitely has come down in value significantly and it will continue to do that. Why? Because, as I said, it's not a limited watch. It's not a watch that is intended to be at that price point. They will produce a crap ton of them. They did not produce a lot of them when it came out. I honestly don't really know why. Uh, probably has something to do with supply chains. But um, this is definitely not something that will keep the value that it has today. So if you've got one, might as well sell it. But then again, if you bought it for retail, why sell it? Because, you know, it's got a good amount of value now. And in the future, you can also buy a new one for the same price. So it wouldn't really make a lot of sense to sell it uh, now, if you just want to keep it, if you want to want the profit, I mean, might as well sell it because it's not going to go for up further in value. Uh, I can't see that, like, at all with a not limited watch, you know, that's going to last for a decent amount of time. Like, it's not like this is some sort of product that breaks in two weeks and you have to buy a new one. Not going to happen. It's going to last for a couple of years. But, um, yeah, I don't see them going up in value anymore. They will go down, in my opinion. Overall, you have to keep in mind that when you're buying this watch, you are buying a watch that is worth 250 bucks. So if you want something that is actually worth a thousand bucks, you should definitely look at other brands. There are plenty of watches out there that you can buy for about a thousand bucks that are actually really good value. Uh, if you want a new watch, look at uh, Tag Heuer, for example, or uh, Nomos or stuff like that. Like, they produce good quality watches for a decent amount of money. So, if you want that, go ahead and look for something else, I would say. Because a thousand bucks for a watch that's worth 250, and that will be worth 250 in the near future, it's just a little excessive, in my opinion. But that's obviously just me. If you've got a different opinion about that, be sure to let me know, because I'm actually very interested. What did you think about when you bought this watch for $1,000. Or maybe you didn't, maybe you bought it for 250 and maybe you sold it to someone for a thousand bucks or for 1,500 bucks. What did you think about that? Did you think it was a good idea of them to buy the watch from you or whatever? Let me know all of that. I would really be curious about all of this stuff. And so, yeah, if you've got any more questions, be sure to write them in the comments below. I'd be very happy to answer them. As always, if you want to, you can also rate the video with either like a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you might want to do. And you can also subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss any other interesting watch-related videos. I've got some really cool unboxings and stuff coming for you. So, yeah.
that's going to be cool, I think. Hopefully. If not, oh well. You can unsubscribe at any uh, given point if you uh, think I'm a knob. Whatever. You can do that. So, yeah, give it a try. And um, have a fantastic week. And see you next time.